All right, all right, all right, all right. Welcome, live training numero uno. What's up, Coach Nate? How are you today? Doing great, man. How are you doing? Amazing, amazing. So, um, guys, this is uh, really exciting. We have a lot in store for you today. Um, so, pretty much, uh, we're going to go ahead and break down um, some really important things to see for you today. And uh, obviously, You've probably seen by the name of this and what we've called it. We're going to be going over the five steps to achieve and sustain fat loss. And before we do that, I do want to dive a bit into um, my team over here at Be Taught Not Told Coaching and also introduce you guys to Coach Nate, um, my CSM, my community success manager, and also assistant coach. Um, so coach Nate has been working with me for the last three years, uh, inside of the gym, uh, as personal trainers. And so, you know, over the last three years or so, we have reached a point where we've helped tons of people in Orange County. And now we want to branch out and help people not only in our area, but around the world and also in Orange County, uh, and also in the United States. And so, um, Basically, you know, we want to be able to change as many lives as possible. And we realize that in person, we can only help so many people. So this is us reaching out and wanting to help more people. And so to kick this off, we want to give you guys as much free value as possible. So that's kind of what we're going to be doing here. And every week I'll be coming out with one of these. And also at the end, I got a little surprise for you. It's going to be um, also a written version of this so you guys can keep it and store it away for future reference. Um, so um, that being said, Nate, uh, would you like to share you know, a little bit about yourself, maybe what you like to do in your free time, and then maybe a little bit about your education? Yeah, man. So um, just like Tyler said, we've been working for about three years. Um, we literally graduated at the same time with both our degrees in kinesiology. Um, I became a coach because I came from a, I guess you could say a skinny background. I used to be bullied as a kid and I know what it feels like to not get the results that you've been chasing. I've been through depression and all of that. So it does take a toll. And my goal is to help you guys as best as I possibly can. So you don't ever get to that state because trust me, it is, it's not a good feeling and you want to be able to work towards something to get a result. Now, what do I like to do for fun? On the weekends, I like to enjoy my EDM music. I love house, deep house, dubstep, trap. So most of the times I'm always out just listening to music and vibing. That's one of my free things. Uh, that's what I like to do on my free time. And that's what makes me happy. For sure, for sure. Thanks for sharing, Nate. I mean, let me tell you guys, if there's ever any festival or any DJ that you're ever curious about, <laughs> Nate's the man to talk to. He's he's the king of music. Like if I, if the new song comes out or I hear a song playing, I send it to Nate. And he's like, oh, yeah, I've already heard that. I'm like, all right, bro, well, like chill, man. So um, thank you for sharing, Nate. And like you said, we both graduated from Cal State Fullerton. Um, go Titans. That was that was a great experience. Um, but, you know, I'm not going to lie to you, like as, as much as we did learn in school, most of what we've learned, honestly, has been from helping people one on one and being able to help people see results and, you know, learning from our failures over the last my last five years of coaching. And I think Nate's been coached. How long have you been coaching now? I want to say about four years, three with you. OK, yeah, just, we're been cho coaching about the same amount of time. So, you know, that experience, I think, trumps any education because, um, I don't know about you, but in a field like this, you learn by doing. So um, thank you. Um, I know that was a little bit of a long winded introduction, but I really just wanted to break down for everyone, you know, where we're coming from and who we are. So you get to know us a little bit more. So going into this next portion, uh, we're about to break down the five steps to achieve and sustain fat loss. So now this first step is realizing why you can't keep off the weight in the first place, right? And so uh, Nate and I discussed this earlier and we were talking about like, okay, what, what has almost every one of our clients that's come to us tried up to this point? And like some of the things we named off are like your keto, Whole30, carb cycling, um, fat burning supplements, intermittent fasting, uh, counting calories, if it fits your macros, um, 
group classes like your F45, your Fit Body Boot Camp, uh, Orange Theory, um, juice cleansers, and- apple cider vinegar. <laughs> yeah, um, you know, like oh man, the, the most dreaded one, the waist trainers, the sweet sweat, the rubbing the stuff on your tummy, expecting to lose body fat. I mean, okay, guys, you know, I'm not going to lie. I tried a lot of that stuff myself. And I also realized it doesn't work. And if it does work, it's for a very short period of time. Because, you know, your friend Jenny over there did keto and she lost 40 pounds and that's freaking fantastic. But where is she now? And how's that going for her? Is that sustainable? Probably not. And if it does work, it's she's an anomaly. And there's very few people that these diets work for because a diet isn't the answer. It's something sustainable. It's something that you enjoy. And so we're going to break down the five things that are the most necessary for you to not only achieve the fat loss, but to sustain it for the rest of your life. So you don't need to lose it again. So you don't gain it back and have to lose it over and over again, which is so damaging for your body. And so to go into this first topic, before we break this down, I want you to know there's a big difference between weight loss and fat loss. And I think too many people get these things confused, right? And so when we think about losing fat, right, a lot of people go straight to the scale. And unfortunately, the scale doesn't matter, right? Because the scale is made up of your hair, your skin, your organs, your bones, everything, everything of your body is your weight, including your body fat and your muscle, right? And so if we look at the scale as the answer to if we're seeing results, we're not always going to get the right answer because we could literally not use the restroom in the morning, drink, you know, two extra liters of water um, and have more carbs and more sodium one day and all of a sudden we were like 10 pounds heavier and then the next day we could drain our body of water become sweat on a run and keep our car cut our carbs because we're so scared and we could be down 10 pounds so you realize your body can fluctuate so much like in any given day i can wake up five pounds heavier or lighter and that's just simply because of water retention and based off of like how much water you drink every day for me i drink about a gallon and a half every day and you know, sometimes when I drink a little less, I notice my weight's lower, but it doesn't mean I lost any body fat because body fat is very different. Body fat is surrounding your muscle. And in order to lose body fat, we need to be in a caloric deficit. And we'll kind of dive into that a little bit here today. But ultimately, you need to eat less than your body burns every day to lose body fat. And the scale isn't going to tell you that. There are machines like a in-body. It's not 100% accurate. We have one at the gym and it measures your body fat percentage. That is a way more accurate indicator of progress. Another indicator of progress would be your energy, how you feel, your stress levels, your sex drive. Um, There's like nine different things that are more important that pay attention to than the scale. And on top of that, you have to realize that the weight isn't going to dictate the direction your results are going always. Now, sometimes it's good to get an idea like, okay, if there's a trend over the last month, your weight's gone down a little bit, that usually is a sign you are going in the right direction. Um, But honestly, like the the thing that we use the most, I would say is either the in-body, which measures your body fat percentage, or if you don't have access to that, using a simple tape measure around your waist to measure your waist circumference is probably one of the cheapest, easiest, and most effective ways to to gauge progress. Um, So keep those things in mind. Now... Let's dive into the real reason you're not losing the weight right now. And that's probably because your metabolism is down-regulated, meaning your metabolism has slowed down because of your current eating habits. And so what I like to kind of, you know, the, the analogy I like to make for this is that imagine you tear your knee, um, you tear one of the, you know, ligaments in your knee, do going on a run or tripping and falling, right? And before you go back to the gym and and you start doing squats again, what do you have to do? Well, you go to a physical therapist and you do physical therapy, right? To repair and to help rebuild the stability and mobility of your joint, right? And so before you start going into a diet, just like your knee, you need to repair and rebuild your metabolism or else 
you're probably just going to get hurt again, or you're probably just going to not see results again. And uh, those two are so similar in that way. So um, we have to realize there, there always is a repair phase that usually comes before we go into a proper diet. And so um, that brings me into point number one, which is eating at maintenance. Now, when it comes to eating at maintenance calories, um, my best advice would be uh, in the document I'm going to send to you guys, there will be a little calculator. So go on Google, you literally search up, um, you know, maintenance calorie calculator. And using that calculation, you'll get your maintenance calories. Your goal should be able to be to build up to eating that amount of food. Now, you don't necessarily need to go there right away. Um, honestly, what I usually recommend to my clients is increasing 100 calories a week until they get to that based off of what they're eating right now. And usually that will help your metabolism speed up. Now, there are other things you need to do, uh, such as lifting weights and such. We'll get into that. Um, but that's going to be the most effective way for you to speed up your metabolism so you're in a better place to make that sustainable progress. Um, so, Nate, do you have any other points on, on that topic of eating at maintenance? Um, I would have to say, and this goes to the next topic that we're about to talk about, is the reason we also want to eat at maintenance is because there is this contradiction that if we eat too much, we become fat. But to our next topic, uh, which is going to be lifting weights, believe it or not, muscle tissue is denser, it's heavier, but it's also more expensive that our body is, your muscles are going to need more calories in order to burn body fat. So if you're not eating enough food, guess what? You're actually, your body starts feeding off of itself, which causes your fat gain to rise higher. Um, it's not something that we want to do, but it's something that we need to learn and something that we need to teach ourselves that eating more food actually is the way to go in order to speed up our metabolism. Yeah, I'm kind of touching on what you said there. Like one, one thing I've learned over time is that, you know, a lot of people are first, first step in losing weight. They think like, oh, I'm just going to go do a bunch of cardio because, you know, my friend did it. Uh, my friend, Miss Johnson did it or, you know, hey, uh, I saw this guy on the internet doing, you know, tons of cardio to lose weight and he lost a ton. Like it, it's, it's, it's saddening to me because um, it's not the answer. And you know, I don't know about you, but I don't want to have to do cardio for the rest of my life because whatever you do to get to your goal, you need to be able to sustain. So if you have to run five miles every day to get to your goal, you got to continue running five miles to stay there. So if you get there and then you have stopped running all of a sudden, you're just going to gain the weight right back. So to me, that's kind of pointless. And not only that, but um, endless amounts of cardio actually ends up down regulating your metabolism even more because your body becomes more efficient. So keep that in mind. The cardio is not the answer for you. And that brings me to point number two, which is lifting weights. Lifting weights is by far the most important thing that you can do on this planet to take care of your health. It is so valuable and there's so many different benefits that you can gain from just lifting weights. And it, it's so far beyond just looking a certain way. It it's, has so much more to do with your mental health and your emotional health, your anxiety and depression um, are things that it can help with. And also like your bone density, especially as we age, osteoporosis, osteopenia, um, it can reverse those things, which is mind blowing. Um, and I think that it's, often overlooked as a tool that we can use to maintain or, or improve our health. Um, so the most important things to focus on with lifting weights is recovery. I think recovery is overlooked. Nate, wouldn't you agree with that? Absolutely. And, and Nate, let me ask you, how many days a week do we recommend most of our clients work out? Only two to three times a week. And I'm pretty sure to you guys, you're probably thinking, isn't that too little? But believe it or not, it's not. You see, by training two to three times a week of full body, your whole body is getting, you know, I guess we could call it as a workout. You're getting stronger on every aspect and every single part of your body. It's the recovery and your nutrition, which goes back to our first point, once again, of maintenance, that's actually going to create the result that you're looking for. Exactly. And so that's why, you know, we have to remember that like the most 
valuable tissue on our body is muscle. And, and it's simply like, like Nate was saying too, it, it's just the most expensive tissue. Like it, when weight in general on our body will cause us to burn more calories, right? And the difference is, is body fat and muscle burn different amounts of calories. And also having more muscle will contribute to more calorie burn in comparison to more fat. And so the more muscle we have in our body, the faster we can get our metabolism and the more food we can eat while losing weight. I mean, let me ask you, how nice would it be to eat more food and lose more weight? I don't know about you, but that sounds great to me. <laughs> for example, um, when I first started working out, in order for me to lose weight, I had to eat around 17 to 1800 calories, which uh, I'm not a huge person, I'm a small human, but at the end of the day, like that wasn't sustainable for me. That wasn't enjoyable for me. And now I can eat upwards of 26, 2700 calories and maintain 10% body fat, which before that was like a, a huge bulk for me. I was putting on two to three pounds a week eating that much food. And so that's simply just from the work I put into building the muscle and speeding up my metabolism. So um, I think the key point to, to this topic is really just remembering that you know, your nutrition fuels your muscle building and your recovery builds your muscle. So if you don't have both of those things, your nutrition and your recovery uh, dialed in as much as possible, you are going to have a really hard time um, building that muscle and seeing the results that you desire. And, and so, sustaining it. Yeah. Yeah. It, 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 at the end of the day, it's like, what is the point of trying so hard to see results if you can't sustain it and so i mean again like here are some like little little pointers too in the gym is like the best thing you can focus on is progressive overload which is what adding five to ten pounds every week on every exercise uh you didn't hitting full body workouts like me and nate talked about um if you're a female you know focus on the lower body and hit a little bit of upper body you don't want to be unbalanced you want to be all legs and no torso um so you know don't ever skip your core you know your core is extremely important for you to stay stable it also make you stronger because you'll be um again like i said more stable and so long term that's going to allow you to build more muscle as well um on top of that um the biggest things are just don't avoid hitting certain muscle groups because you think you're going to get too big or bulky i promise you at any point in time at any point in time if you feel a muscle is getting too big or too bulky, all you have to do is stop. But I promise you, there will be no point in time you'll wake up in the morning and be like, oh my God, I'm too jacked. Like, I, I wish, I wish I had that problem. Let me tell you, I wish I had that problem. Okay. Um, so Nate, number three now, um, which is eating enough protein. Oh yes. You know, oh, the dreaded. Um, it's like, I get it, guys. Like, it's hard. Let me let me tell you this. If you can eat 100 grams of protein and 100 grams of potato chips, what's going to be easier here? Obviously, the potato chips, right? But the reason is because those are carbohydrates. If we're talking like chicken or beef at 100 grams, this is satiating, which means it's going to make you full. But guess what? It's going to cause you not to want to snack throughout the day. And like we mentioned earlier, protein builds muscle. So wouldn't you rather have a benefit rather than something that's actually going to harm you? I mean, I would. I 100% agree with that. And at the end of the day, like the protein is going to just make you feel better too. It's like, I, I always like bring it back to asking my clients, like when, when they start eating healthier and they start to implement these better habits where they start to avoid these highly processed foods that come in all these packages, I, I ask them I'm like, Hey, have you noticed a difference in like maybe your energy or your sex drive or you know, just, yeah. Or how your sleep is even like just from eating better food. And it's like crazy how a small change like that can make such a big difference in just your daily life. Um, so I'm sure you're, you're wondering like, okay, how many, how much protein should I eat? And so, um, I always recommend to my clients 0 0.8 to one gram per pound of body. Now keep in mind, if you are, you know, say 25, 30 pounds overweight or more, um, I usually like to use your lean body mass or even your goal weight as your weight for the measurement or for the calculation. So 
Um, let's just give a little example. So say you weigh 150 pounds uh, for numbers purposes, right? And we want to go in the lower end, which is 0 0.8. So 0 0.8 times 150 pounds is 120 grams. So 120 grams of protein, that really is not as much as you probably think. And so what I like to do also is break that into how many meals you eat a day. So let's just say you have, you know, three meals a day. So that 120 grams in three meals is 40 grams of protein per meal. That's really not that much. That's about five, six ounces of protein. You know, your fist is about, I think, four ounces of meat. Four ounces. Fist. Four yeah, ounces. So a little, like what, a fist and a half of meat, um, chicken, steak, whatever. I mean, obviously everyone's fist is a little bit different size, but I highly recommend buying a food scale. I highly recommend buying a food scale. I highly recommend weighing your food and tracking your food so you are aware of actually how many calories you're eating. And you know, obviously the goal is to work towards being able to do it intuitively, being able to like look at your plate and kind of estimate as close as possible. But, you know, if, if you are relying on that and you have never tracked before you, I promise you, you are so off. Um, and also like, if you go, like, for example, if I Googled a sweet potato and I went to look up how many calories were in a sweet potato, I thought, I thought a little sweet potato that I was eating, a medium sized sweet potato on Google was like, oh, it's like 200 calories. I was like, oh, sweet. I can eat like three of these suckers. Um, little did I know, once I weighed it and saw how many grams it was, and then I did the calculations, I was like, holy shit, that's a 600 calorie potato. I was like, whoa. And so I didn't even realize that I was eating so much more than I thought, which when I was bulking, that was a good thing. But when I'm trying to cut and I didn't realize this, it really messed up my my goals and also i was really curious to why i wasn't seeing the results it was because i wasn't aware of how much i was actually eating so um highly recommend you get a food scale and take take care of that um but and if you need help with that we'll me and tyler we will definitely post a video on how to use a food scale and actually how to record your food not only that but there are several labels and i'm pretty sure you're wondering like how much protein is going to be on this food scale we will go over that too, because the label is very important. We want to know how much we're consuming. If I were to eat four gram of uh, four ounces of meat, guess what? That is about 24 to 25 grams of protein. We will teach you that. We have no problem with that. Absolutely. And I think um, actually that's one of our plans is to post that. And also in the document, I'll attach a little link. So you guys can see that video of how to track your food a little bit better. So um, I mean, honestly, the biggest reason we included number three, which is consuming more protein is because between Nate and I, I think 99, even a hundred percent of our clients have an issue eating their or hitting their protein targets. So um, that's exactly why we, we really feel that this is something that's way overlooked. And if we put more attention and focus there, we're going to be a lot more successful on this journey. So um, eat your freaking protein. Now, number four, what is it, Nate? Quality of sleep, of which none of us get a lot of. <laughs> I, uh, Personally, this one hit home for me uh, as someone that's up at 345, 4, 4 in the morning most days of the week. It's it's really tough, and I won't lie to you. It's, it's something that even I struggle with, and I think it's probably one of my biggest struggles um, on my own journey. And so I feel you. Um, but let's kind of go over the basics of like, you know, let, Nate, how many hours of sleep should we get every night? We should be getting at least, I would say seven to eight six to eight even mm, i wouldn't say six i would say probably like seven seven eight seven eight if you can get nine you probably are a champion and you probably feel better than anyone i know um but for a lot of us it's unrealistic so i think eight's the golden number and i think seven's acceptable um, and I think anything below that, you are missing out on potential productivity and potential energy you could have throughout your day. So what can we do to help sleep? I mean, we have to realize, I mean, not only is sleep just going to help us feel more energized, but also it's like, that's where we recover the most from our workouts, from our day in our, our brains, our store, all of our memories. And so if we can't think properly, we can't recall memories we have. If you notice your 
crashing in your day, if you notice you're really tired all the time, your sleep needs to be addressed. And so um, I actually have a video on this that I posted on, on Instagram and TikTok and YouTube and Facebook, but basically, uh, I'll attach it in the document, but basically like some of the key points that I focus on is like, you know, avoiding bright lights or kind of like dim your lights in your house or wearing blue light blockers like one to two hours before bed. That has been game changer for me because it helps your body start producing melatonin. Um, not only that, avoid your dang phone. Avoid your phone an hour or two before bed because so many people sit on there and scroll social media. Like, why don't you break out a journal and write down three things that you're grateful for and three, three things that went shitty today? Don't be afraid to do that. Um, or if that's not for you, spend that time talking with your partner, going on a walk after dinner to help your food digest. You know, there's so many things you can do to help your body kind of come into this calm state. But don't do anything that's going to be stressful. Don't do anything that's going to get you excited. Because what that's going to do is going to spike your heart rate. It's going to get your blood flowing. And then you're going to be excited. And then you're going to lay in bed. And you're going to be like, why can I not sleep? Well, dude, you just drank a fucking Red Bull. What do you expect? <laughs> but it's like really understanding. Yeah, about Red Bull, avoid pre-workout. Oh, yes. In the afternoon. Because I think so many times, oh, I didn't get sleep. Why? I took pre-workout uh, yesterday at 3 p.m. Well, obviously, that's why you can't sleep. Yeah. I mean, not only pre-workout, but even just eating right before you go to sleep too, like your body's trying to digest. It wants you to actually walk a little bit so it can help digest. If you just eat a mountain of food and then you go lay in bed, your body's about making a bunch of noises and oh man, you're going to feel bloated the next day. You're going to look in the mirror when you wake up in the morning to get ready for work and you're going to be like, oh, who, who's that person? You know, and it, it's going to be really discouraging. So, um those are all things to keep in mind. And also like um, a lot of people, I think don't really discuss like the temperature of your room, having a cooler temperature at night. I know like recently I got solar and I started running my air conditioning at night and uh, I didn't realize, but it has been game changer. I have been sleeping 10 times better and deeper, just simply having a cooler temperature in my house. So um, if you, if it's in the budget, do it. If you can't have that open a window, do whatever you can. That's reasonable for you to um, stay cooler and also as dark as possible. So like if you're, I mean, I'm up before the sun half the time, so uh, that's not really been an issue for me. But if you have just your blinds and they're wide open, lights coming in in the morning, every morning, it's like, it's, it's going to be harder for you to stay in that deep sleep cycle. Um, Nate, do you think I covered about everything for sleep? What other, did you have any other? Uh... I mean, one thing that also works for me, for all you guys that wear contacts, um, for me personally, the moment I take them off, it's like my eyes are just relieved. Put your glasses on, again, avoid your screen, and I guarantee you, you, you should be able to fall asleep. Don't keep them on and go to sleep. That's terrible. You can actually damage your eyes that way. But that's something that has helped me. Maybe it'll help you too. Just take up your contacts immediately. Do not get on your phone and just lay down. See where it takes you. Absolutely agree with that. And and that also brings me to blue light blockers. Um, most of the blue light blockers that you see on the internet are complete baloney. Um, Amazon ones usually don't actually help you. So um, there's one company I trust. It's called Felix Gray. I'm not sponsored or anything. I just, I've done my research on blue light blockers because I bought a really expensive, nice pair of them. And let me tell you, they do make the world of a difference. Um, they're nighttime ones. They have like a patented formula or something in the lens where basically it actually blocks blue light. And that makes an insane difference. Like I noticed like probably right after this call, I'm going to go put those on and I'm going to sleep like a baby. But um, usually like an hour or two before bed, I throw those on. But what it does is like when you're on your phone, so say you are on your phone before bed or, you know, I'm on my computer, I have my, my lights on and stuff. Um, it filters out that light so your body doesn't get that signal to be awake. That's what you, that's what evolutionarily has told us to wake up and go to bed at night is that blue light. So it helps your body start producing that melatonin that will help you go to bed. So um, those are the four. We have one more for you guys. So um, probably, arguably one of the most important things. And I kind of touched on this a little bit in the beginning. But I think it's where our focus should be in terms of 
achieving and sustaining this fat loss for life, which is focusing on our quality of life. Focusing on the quality of life that you want and the quality of life that you enjoy. And so I think if we spend so much time either punishing ourselves or, you know, damaging our bodies or doing things that we don't enjoy, you're going to stop. You're going to quit at some point in time. And so if we can find ways to make these things enjoyable, make these new changes enjoyable, we're going to be a lot more successful at sustaining our fat loss, sustaining our results long term. Whether that's working out, hitting your protein, whether that's just moving more, whether that's going to bed early, making these habits enjoyable is extremely important. And so the, the things that I would put my most of my focus on is like, one, is not changing everything at once. I'm sure Nate and I can both relate to this. At some point in time when we first started working out, what did we go do? We went and did everything. Yeah. Oh, man. I remember one time when I was younger, um, it was like one of my first like four or five times working out. I went to the gym and me and my buddies were just like, I was in high school and me and my buddies were just like, hey, bro, like we haven't tried all the machines here. And I was like, like, how about today we just do like three sets on every machine? And I was like, yeah. Oh my, dude, I remember laying in bed the next day and I was like, I can't move. I'm not moving. I'm not moving. Like my entire body hurt. I did too much. And that principle applies to pretty much anything you do in life. You do too much of anything is bad. Too little is like probably safer. So, you know, don't be afraid to start with a little and build up to that appropriate amount. You know, if you're having problems hitting your protein goal, don't be afraid to just track your food, add five to 10 grams every week on your daily intake and build up to where you need to be. You don't need to change, go from 50 grams a day to 120. I know that's hard. I know that is extremely challenging. And I don't expect you, I wouldn't expect you to change that all right away because that's not how real life works. So, well, especially if you want to be sustainable, right? So don't be afraid to take your time with these things. Like, for example, like minimizing your stress is another topic where we have to try to be able to get rid of the things in our life that stress us out the most. So if we can, you know, stay off of social media as much as possible. I know for me, like first thing in the morning, if I wake up and just go directly to Instagram and start scrolling, like it gives me this weird, like stressed feeling. And then I go to work in the morning and I just, something's off. And so personally, I notice like, okay, I got to spin in the morning. I go into my office. I actually have a red light. This is a juve light. It's for red light therapy, um, which helps like kind of reset your circadian rhythm. I'm up before the sun. So that's my sunlight in the morning. And that's just me. And I just focus on my breathing. And that really helps me wake up, helps me be positive. I get to think through my day, kind of plan ahead and get excited for the sessions I'm about to go help my clients with. So, um, you know, coming up with some sort of routine. Now, there is no secret formula routine. There's no million dollar, millionaire, billionaire routine. It's a bunch of bullshit. The best routine for you is the one you enjoy. I enjoy doing that. I enjoy taking care of my body. So that's why I do it. Now, whatever the heck you enjoy, do it. Nate, I'm sure you have some sort of routine in the morning, like making your bed, like picking up after yourself a little bit. So when you come home, you're not like, oh my God, all my house is a mess. Right? Right? Yeah, basically. And making my coffee in the morning, of course. Absolutely. One of my favorite things to do is honestly, I make my coffee in the morning. And I like, I almost always will do this when I grab the pot, just smell it. Like that smell of coffee in the morning. It's just like, oh, oh, here it comes. That first hit of coffee in the morning, you're just like, yes. (laughs) Anyways, so again, again, guys, like it all comes down to like, you have to do what you love and do the things you enjoy. And if you know weightlifting is something you really enjoy, start there. And then we can put a little focus on nutrition. I would say of these five things, probably of the four, because this is number one, I think, is pick one, right? Build upon it. Start small and build upon it. Once you feel it's at a healthy level, start on the next one and then build upon it. 
And so you can build these into your daily life and then you can start to build routine around it and you can start to enjoy this new lifestyle you're living. And I promise you, once you get to that point, you're going to look the way you want. You're going to feel the way you want. You're going to have the best energy of your life. You're going to have the best sleep of your life. You're going to have the best sex of your life. You're going to have all the things that you want and desire because of the habits you've instilled into your life. And so that kind of brings me to the wrap up. Um, I know those were pretty deep. Um, and I do want to let you guys know, like, at any point, if you guys need ex assistance, you guys and gals, if you need assistance at any point in time along this journey to overcome an obstacle, don't be afraid to reach out to me. Don't be afraid to reach out to Nate. We will gladly hop on a phone call with you to just go over how you can get overcome this obstacle or over messages to tell you, hey, you know what? Here's a little pointer for me or here's something I experienced or here's something I helped the client with. Like, we're here for you and we want to support you on this journey. We know it's challenging and we've seen hundreds of people go through it and we've seen most succeed and we've seen also many, if not actually many more, that have not succeeded because they try to change everything at once. So take your time. And so um, at the end of the day, you know, I think if, if you truly want to make this change in your body, you want to just not only achieve and sustain this, um, you will make certain sacrifices and you will also realize there are certain things that are non-negotiable. My non-negotiable is being able to enjoy a beer on the weekends. I like to relax, watch a football game, crack a Pacifico, sit back and drink a beer. Nate, what do you like to do? What's your guilty pleasure? I'm sorry, but on the weekends, I love to go out and listen to EDM music. That is my escape. That's what makes me happy. And that is why I do it. And what's your drink of choice there, young man? Is the key. Moderation is key. I agree. Not, you know, partying from Friday all the way to Tuesday. That'd be ridiculous. Maybe one day out of the week. Okay, go ahead. Have fun. But then when it comes to the week and it comes back to getting together, you know, you're ready to work. At the end of the day, it's all about moderation. Exactly. Exactly. And like, I think I touched on that earlier, which is like, too much is too much. And too much is bad. No matter what it is, it's too much of anything is bad. So um, I think... At the end of the day, you know, do the things you love in moderation and find new ways to find enjoyment in the things that need to change. And so I'm going to leave that with you guys. And um, like I said, at this point in time, if you guys have any questions, you need any assistance, um, that's what we're here for. And we want to help you along this journey. Uh, we know it's challenging. And so we're here to help and there's no cost involved we literally our sole purpose of doing this is to give you as much free shit as possible and we're going to continue to do that for ever so again if you guys need anything let us know coach tyler coach, coach. Nate, here to help you guys so um i look forward to hearing from you guys about what you thought about this recording um if you're watching it after the fact I want to know kind of what your thoughts were um, and what you want to see next. So uh, after you guys watch this, uh, I would love to hear some feedback, maybe, you know, what we did great, what we did not do very great and uh, what you'd like to learn more about. And so um, if you guys do that for me, I would greatly appreciate it. I'll give you even more free shit. So um, thank you again for watching. And if you're still here, uh, I appreciate you and uh, look forward to hearing from you. And so, all righty. Well, that was amazing. Great job. First free shit going down. So remember, guys, those are the five steps to achieve and sustain fat loss. Peace. Peace.